All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Thank the Lord. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for another day for allowing us to be in the land of the living. We welcome those that uh, may be watching by Facebook. We welcome you to partake of Church of Christ Ministries, our Sunday school, our Sunday school Zoom classroom, uh, where our pastor is Pastor Michael J. Isaac and First Lady Angela Isaac. We thank God that you are able to join us this morning and pray that you will be a that, uh, that you will be blessed by the lesson on this morning. And if you'd like to join us in the Zoom classroom and, and participate into some of the conversation, we'd love to have you. Uh, you. While you're on the Facebook page, you can actually go to the events and go, go down to Sunday School and you can click on that link that's there and it'll bring you right into the, the uh, Zoom classroom. Just put in for your password study all capital letters and you will come right into the zoom classroom we love to have you amen our lesson title today is christ our only foundation christ our only foundation yes and the lesson text is coming from first corinthians chapter 3 verses 10 through 23 and the related scriptures are first corinthians 3 chapter 1 through 9 in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. And the time was AD 55, and the place was Ephesus. And our golden text reads, for other, uh, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And it's 1 Corinthians 3, 11. So at this time, before we get started into our lesson, we're going to ask if there be any prayer requests. Uh, yes, I ask you all to pray for the Balthrop family, um, pray for uh, all the bereaved families everywhere, uh, we ask you to pray for uh, the body of Christ, pray for Partakers Church of Christ Ministries, uh, what was that name? Troy Coley. Oh, Troy Coley, Delicia Coley. Coley, Victor Coley, uh, pray for uh, all of our uh, my siblings and their families and my wife's siblings and their and their families pray just pray for uh one another uh that the lord continues to show us the way if we obey and be willing to move forward in this these last evil days god is still a good god yeah. amen uh, the, thanks continue uh the lord bless you Pray for me and my family and unsaved portions of my family. My brother that's doing a rehab in North Carolina, cousin uh, Gaynell in um, Florida. Let's continue praying one for another. Let us pray for senior citizens and uh, homeless and uh, mental illness. Amen. Yes. Keep my family. My family in prayer, um, unsaved portion of my family, the unsaved and the unconcerned, uh, the Cahill family, uh, the Dickens family, the Dotson family, uh, our youth, keep our youth, uh, uh, the body of Christ, our uh, pastor, first lady, PCCM ministry, uh, and Cadia. Amen. I believe you all covered everything except for, uh, I'm going to try to fill in the blanks. <laughs> Pray for those uh, it, it still, uh, you know, Ukraine situation in Russia. Pray that yes. God will bring it into the uh, senseless violence over there. Pray mm -hmm. for God will move upon uh, Vladimir Putin's heart. Most of all, that God will save him uh and bring them to a place of repentance um and any any of those that are involved in it that don't know the lord jesus christ um I continue to pray for me and my family pray for missionary pat she's not feeling too well today so keep her in prayer in jesus name any other prayer requests if not we will Go to the throne of grace. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your love and kindness. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, Lord God. Thank you again for allowing us to see another day, for this is a day that you have made, and we will rejoice 
and be glad in it, Father. We just give you honor. We give you glory. We magnify your name. We glorify you for being holy, for being God all by yourself, Lord God, for being righteous, Lord God. We just give you all the glory, give you all the honor. It's no goodness of our own that you allowed us to be here on today. We know it's only because of your grace and your mercy, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father. As we come, Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that you will remember those prayer requests that's been spoken, Lord God. And even some unspoken, Lord God, you know the desires of our heart, you know the concerns of our heart, Lord God. And we don't know that you are a sovereign God, Lord God, and you're all knowing, Lord God. And yes. we just Lord God, to comfort those that are bereaved at this time, Lord God, even the Bothra family continue to comfort that family, continue to give them strength, Lord God, in their time of need, Lord God, continue to pray, Lord God, uh, as we pray, Lord God, for uh, Troy Coley and Victor Coley and Delisha Coley, Lord God, all of the Coley family, First Lady's family members, Lord God, we pray that you will touch their lives, Lord God, that you will heal those that may be sick in their body, save those that may not know you in the part of their sin, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as well as the Isaac family, Lord God. And we continue to lift up our First Lady and our pastor, Lord God, I ask you to continue to use them for your glory, Lord God. Lord God, we just ask you, Lord God, to bless them even right now, Lord God, continue to have your way, Lord God, in their lives and in each and every situation, lead them and guide them, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for our church family, Lord God, all those are PCCM members in the body of Christ as well, Lord God, continue to provide every need, Lord God, according to your riches and glory, God, in the name of Jesus. You said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, Lord God, so whatever the church is lacking, Father, we know that you will provide, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to continue to, to bless those, Lord God, and in nursing homes, Lord God, even those workers, Lord God, let them work diligently, Lord God, and professionally, Lord God. We pray for Mother Melton, Lord God. We lift her up before you ask. Yes, Lord. Prosper her, Lord God, even as her soul prosper, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We pray mm -hmm. for Goodman, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, even while he's in rehab, Lord God, that you give him a, a healthy and speedy recovery. We pray for Gaynell Spencer as well, Lord God. Praying, Lord God, that you will heal her body, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for all our seniors and elderly, Lord God. Pray that they don't be prayed upon, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Put a head God, in the name of Jesus, those that are homeless, Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to make a way, Lord God, to open doors, Lord God, as well as those that are unemployed, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, <clears throat> that you reveal, Lord God, that the man that was going around uh, uh, taking violent acts against those that were homeless, Lord God. We thank you for revealing that, Lord God, and that, that he was captured, Lord God. And we just give you the glory for it, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, we pray for all those with mental illness, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. All those who are dealing with depression in their lives, Lord God, we rebuke that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We also lift up the Edwards family, Lord God, the Cahill family and the Dinkins family and the Dawson family. We pray, Lord God, that you will bless them, Lord God, that you will watch them. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, provide every need, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. You know what they stand in need of, Lord God. You know what they're lacking, God. And you, we know that you are God of plenty, Lord God, that you, you will provide according to your riches and glory. We continue to lift our youth up, Lord God, before you. And pray, Lord God, that you will watch over our youth, Lord God. And, Lord God, continue to protect them from, Lord God, senseless violence in their schools, Lord God, or even in their communities. Cover them with your blood, God. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise. Remember all those that may be on this Zoom call and those that may be watching my Facebook, Lord God, whose prayer requests we may not have been able to hear, Lord. We just ask you, Lord God, to make a way for their situation. And we just give you all the praise, give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. 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 All right. At this time, we're going to ask if Deacon Edwards will lead us in our Apostle Creed. I believe in God, <clears throat> excuse me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator <clears throat> of heaven and earth, <clears throat> and in Jesus Christ, his son, his, his only son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born under Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead, and then he, he arose from the dead, and there he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from which he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I got excuse me. I think all that yelling last night, I think I lost my boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We thank uh, that was for the Apostle Creed. 
Again, our lesson title is lesson is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 23. For those that may not have a Sunday school book, those that may be watching my Facebook, follow along in, in this, with the scriptures, you can do <clears throat> the title is Christ, our only foundation, Christ, our only foundation. And we have three outlines today. The first outline is the foundation of the church, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15. Uh, the second is the temple of God, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. And the last outline is uh, the strength of wisdom, 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 18 through 23. And I will read our today's aim, and then I'll go into a, a quick introduction here. Uh, today's aim is to be reminded that Christ is the believer's only foundation, that Christ is the believer's only foundation, and the principle is to understand what it means to have no other foundation than Christ. That is important to understand that there's no other foundation when it comes to salvation other than Christ. Amen. The application is to make sure we faithfully build only upon Christ's foundation, realizing that the church is God's holy temple. We must not rely on vain human wisdom, but rather employ all the good, the good things that God has provided for our ministry to glorify his holy name. Amen. I'm just going to read. I, I was kind of going back and forth between two introductions. One of them is a little lengthy and one of them is kind of short. I like both, but for the sake of time, I'm going to read the short one here. And it says, today's lesson, Paul expounds on what it means to live with Christ as our only foundation. As we serve the Lord, we are building his church, which is the holy temple of God. As we build, we dare not build but our best effort and resources, for we are builder, building the glory of God himself. Amen. Amen. No amens to that. Amen. Come on. Uh, it, says we, it says here, but our best efforts, that's the way we, we dare not to build anything but our best effort and resources. Amen. Amen. For our Amen. best efforts. And I, I pretty like like the way the lesson kind of gets into that part. So we got about uh, 14 verses. So if everybody can take, uh, I guess, uh, three verses, and uh, it's going to be two of this. So if we could start with uh, Mother Melton, if you could take the first two, um, Deacon Edwards, the next, well, the first three, <laughs> uh, Deacon Edwards, uh, the second three. Elder Bossett, the next three, and Alicia, if you could take the next, I think it's three or two, somewhere around there. We'll continue on in that order, amen. First uh, Corinthians 3.10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundations can no man lay than that is, that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work should be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's, every man's work of what sort it is. If any, if any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he shall, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? 
If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple are ye? Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolish, foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ, Christ, and Christ is God's. Amen. All right. Did you read five verses, of Alicia? <laughs> oh, did I take somebody's? I thought I was reading the last. That's the whole thing. We thank God for you. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> We're going to jump right into the lesson. I'm seeing you you anxious this morning, so thank the Lord to, to jump into the lesson. Did you, Really good lesson. All right, we're going to start the first outline. All right, the first outline is the foundation of the church, and we're going to start with uh, the foundation of the church. <laughs> That's the title. All right, so get someone to read that part. First Corinthians 3, 10 through 1, the 10 through 11, I'm sorry. The foundation for the church. The purpose of the, this week's lesson is to show that the foundation of the church is Jesus Christ. Everything we believe and live according to begins and ends in him. When the winds of trials and tribulations blow against us, we know we can stand firm because our foundation is strong and immovable. It should bring us great joy to know that our lives are built on the foundation of Christ. When construction on a building begins, only one foundation is laid. There is no need to multi for multiple foundations and the mere thought of this is foolish. The entire structure is built on one foundation and the foundation Paul is speaking of is Jesus Christ. We as Christians have no other foundation than Christ and he is the one the church is built on. Well, right. this whole, this, this uh, reading really uh, explains itself that you know, Jesus Christ is our foundation. And what I want to um, bring out on this, like some I've seen like people come up four or five times and want to get saved every time. But once you got saved that first time, that's your foundation. It's already mm -hmm. been built. I mean, all you have to do is, is build on it. You don't lay the foundation again because you've already done that. So you, you have to grow in Christ, build on the foundation. Amen. Any any other any other comments, questions? Um, it, it also had said in the lesson that Paul had built the foundation, but Apollos came along and um and I guess famous. Yeah, on to it and um it was saying how careful we have to be when we're building the foundation of god and that we all have to be in, in the mindset that once builds then the other one will build on it everyone can just build a not everyone can build a foundation so that was one thing that i had taken from it that, that paul said is careful to note um, that this was done by the grace of God. So we all have to be on one accord and one mind when we're building on the foundation. Yes. And also, 
Uh, I know the lesson doesn't speak of it, but <clears throat> the Bible says that, that Jesus Christ was the cornerstone, amen, uh, of that foundation. Because you can't take away, you know, and I don't know much about building, but I hear the cornerstone. If you don't have that cornerstone right, everything, the whole foundation is going to be off. So it's very important that we build upon the foundation that's already laid. But when we're talking about building, though, I like the way the lesson talked about <clears throat> the work of the church, you know, building on this foundation is not, not a, a one-person effort. Uh, it says God, God has not de designed anyone to be able to, to do everything. <clears throat> and Paul, as we know, likened the body of Christ as, as many members, just like our physical bodies. He said, super Christian does not exist. Everyone has a purpose and a place of importance in the church. You know, for the church to be healthy, everybody has to do their part. So if we understand that, just like your body, if, if one part of your body suffers, your whole body suffers, you know, um, so we got to understand for uh, the church to be healthy, everybody needs to do their part. God has placed everybody in a specific part of the body of, of, of Christ that, you know, that we should be, uh, as he said, fitly joined together. Um, and it's no one person's responsibility to help build the church or build upon the foundation. Um, so and we, as we know, that is uh, the body of Christ. So, you know, I, I like that part. And I just wanted to share that part out of the lesson. I want to uh, bring out that the, uh, once the foundation is laid, which is Jesus Christ, you have, you know, the says the winds and the trials mm -hmm. and tribulations, it can't destroy the foundation mm -hmm. because the foundation is, is, is already, you know, built on the sure foundation, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I just want to uh, think about the time when my aunt was, uh, her house was destroyed in a tornado. So it took the whole house off the foundation. So when they went to build a new house, they didn't take the foundation out. They built on the old foundation and build a new house. Mm -hmm. And if the foundation is solid, like you said, you don't have to worry about the foundation being destroyed. So right. when we liken that into our physical body, our physical house, you know, it's the same thing. You know, our foundation should be built as our, uh, we build upon the foundation, which is already Christ, which is the Holy Ghost. Christ in us, and we build on that. You know, when we do go through trials and tribulations, we, you know, we may have some some ups and downs, but the foundation is not destroyed. You know, so we got to uh, understand, it, and it gets more into the lesson in that part. So I'm not going to jump too far ahead, uh, but that's good stuff. You know, the foundation. We got to understand the foundation is very important uh, when it comes to building. So I'm not a master builder, and I know. Pastor, you know, he, he used to do drawings and uh, uh, I forgot blueprints or whatever you call them, you know, so he knows a lot about building and uh, I know he can't chime in right now, but I know he would if he could. All right. All right we're going to move on to the next part, the foundation for good works. First Corinthians 3, 12 to 13. Now that the foundation has been laid, it is time to build on it. Christ, our foundation, has given his life on the cross and has been risen from the dead. These facts are essential to all Christians' doctrine and practices. Practice. The foundation can only be laid one time, and there is only one. All of our current and future works is to be conducted on the finished work of Jesus and his resurrection. The strength and beauty of structure depends on the quality of building materials. There is only one foundation, but many materials are used in construction. Some materials are better than others and some will therefore stand in the test of time better than others. Paul uses the, some examples of imperishable and perishable materials to show us the need for diligence in Christian work. His example of imperable, imperishable materials are gold, silver, and precious stones. These items are costly and call for skill and patience in their use. Perishable materials are cheaper and generally require less care. 
Paul uses wood, hay, and straw as an example. How sad is how sad it is to have a beautiful foundation only to use shoddy materials to build on it. Each person must carefully choose what kind of building materials he is going to use to build on the foundation of his work will be evaluated. This is not a matter of competing with other builders to see who did the best, but rather to determine the level of our faithfulness and love for the Lord. Some Christians work diligently and use imperishable materials. They serve in faith wholeheartedly seeking to do his will in all things. When our lives reflect Jesus and our hearts seek to honor him, God will, God will treasure our works. Others are cheap and lazy and use perishable materials. They serve grudgingly out of compulsion and not from faith. If we trust in Jesus just enough to put our faith in him, but still hold back areas of our lives, we will not have much to be rewarded for. Our devotion to God will be revealed by the types of materials we use to build our lives on the foundation he laid. In the end, each person's work will be evaluated and nothing will be hitting. The day refers to the day when the fire of judgment will apply to each of our, of our works. This will not be the final day of judgment in store for unbelievers, but a thorough assessment of believers' works in this life. Gold, silver, and precious stones will survive the fire, but the wood, hay, and straw will be consumed, leaving the builders with nothing to show for the works he has done. Wow, wow. You that's, uh, that's good. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a, it is a lot in here. Um, well, I just want to say, I'll just put it, sum it up, that we want to be able to have a good foundation in God. I'm just going to put it that way. But the one thing that um, I do want to point out is that our devotion to Christ will be revealed by the types of materials we use to build our lives on the foundation he laid. So, you know, it's important to understand that, you know, when he said the gold, the silver, these are solid things. These are things that, you know, can't nothing come against and destroy it. Whereas the hay and the stubble, these are the things that are weak. You know, those are these things are not strong enough for our foundation. So we got to understand that our foundation that's, that stands ashore has to be stand on strong things, you know, not the weak things. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have, like you say, we have a solid foundation. But as we go on, like um, I think Pastor said it several times, we just, you just can't only give two hours every Sunday. You know, you got to continue to build every day on that foundation. I mean, you know, to build yourself up to do, to do the work. You know, not just on Sunday. You know, so you can make it help. You know, you making your material much more stronger. You know, instead of stuff that you know, I'm just coming for two hours. Amen. It says, "My hope is built on nothing less." than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amen. And there, there's also a scripture that says, the foundation of God stands at the shore. Yeah. And this seal, so, you know, yeah. that's a solid foundation right there. Yes. Amen. Anybody I'm else? Away from the lesson, but uh, this, this uh, talking about the perishable, materials it just bring to mind about the, the three little pigs <laughs> that's, that's a good, good one yes that's a good yeah. one <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What if the sticks and one used hay but the one that was used bricks he, he had a solid foundation <laughs> solid foundation but what he built upon the foundation yeah. so and that's what this part was talking about, you know, the, since the foundation has been laid, now the things that we build upon that foundation, how are we building it? How are, and, and, and you know, 
it gave it Paul gave an example of the precious stones and wood. I mean, precious stones and an and example of those things, perishable and non-perishable. And, you know, and how we as Christians, how we at times don't realize what we're building on that foundation. And, and that's important because, uh, you know, some people always say, you know, we well, just shoot from the hip. You know, God doesn't want us to just shoot from the hip. God is a God of order. So when we do our services, our services ought to be well thought and well planned out how we do devotion, how we do certain things. Um, it, you know, we, we want to give God our best. We don't want to just shoot from the hip. And, and that's, well, that's what came to mind when it talked about the, the perishable uh, items where it says uh, others are cheap and lazy and use perishable materials. They serve grudgingly uh, out of compulsion, compulsion and and not of uh, not from faith. Um, you know, just it just make me think that you know some people you know the effort that we put into our worship and, and the effort we put into our work, the things that we do for the Lord. You know, Jesus uh, uh, always talked about you know. Uh, example, he said, you know, what, what person goes into, uh, what person decides to build, but yet doesn't take inventory to make sure he have enough materials to finish the job. So that makes me think that when we are doing something for the Lord, you know, we ought to carefully plan out certain things that we're doing to make sure that we can glorify him in doing it and not our own glorify our own self. And some people do that, you know, uh, they, they try to take glory from God for things that they do, you know, and those things are perishable. They're going to be consumed. You're not going to get rewards for that. The Bible says you already got your reward when we tell people about things that we do for the Lord. So, uh, but those things that came to mind to me when I was reading that part, you know, this part, it has so much in it, it you know, especially that part. It, I'm sorry it wasn't in the student book, but it, a lot of it was in the teacher's book where it talked about, you know, each person must be carefully choose what kind of building materials he, uh, he or she is going to build on the foundation for, the, uh, for his work. Uh, will be evaluated. So, you know, there's rewards that God is going to give us for our efforts. You know, and how our motive, our motives behind our efforts. So those things we got to keep in mind. Some people always say, "Well, I just want to make it to heaven." You know, we all want to make it to heaven, but again, God gave us a great commission. You know, and that is just uh, to reach out and save, uh, try to save those that are lost, to take the gospel message out. And there's going to be for rewards for how we do that. You know, well, are we doing it grudgingly? You know, are we uh, doing it uh, lackadaisical? Um, you know, and again, those type of things are, again, as it says, you know, perishable. They're going to be consumed whenever that, those works are tried by fire. Amen. Any, anybody else? Like I said, that, that I, I was saying, Elder Boss, if you were jumping at the, you couldn't wait to read that part, huh? The whole. <laughs> I couldn't wait to read that one. <laughs> but uh, but that was that was a lot in there, some good stuff in there. I'm going to tell you. Um, but again, we, we have to understand that, you know, you know, the foundation has been laid and how we build upon that foundation is very important to, to, to the, uh, the body of Christ as well as to, uh, to the Lord. Because, you know, again, when certain things start to happen, the foundation is, is, is going to stand. But what about the materials that we use to build upon it? Yeah. We'll Amen. All right. If there's no other questions or no other comments, we're going to go on to the foundation for rewards. Those who work survives the fire of judgment will be rewarded for their service. One thing is for sure, our foundation is eternal and is unaffected by fire. Our work, however, is subject to the fire and open to judgment. Those who take the time to use imperishable materials will receive a reward. They took time to serve God with all their hearts, regardless of the trials and persecutions and, that resulted from it. Those who use perishable materials are immature, stagnant believers who serve themselves and not Christ. They have faith in him and are saved, but they show little devotion to him in their daily lives. Those who use perishable materials will be saved, so as by fire because of their faith in Jesus, but they will have little to no reward for their service. Amen. Any so, 
I just had uh, when when he was when they said so as by fire. Are they saying like barely saved, or what does that mean? <laughs> you, what you see, you saying that they got they they got them the heaven with the smell of smoke on their clothes? Is that what you say? Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's just basically giving you an example as by fire because they tr they, tr they try the, the materials they use would try by fire, <clears throat> but they will they still saved so they, they don't <clears throat> their salvation is not lost. Again, this is not the great white throne judgment. This is a, a judgment for works. So uh, it's not speaking of them barely making it to heaven. Again, uh, and I apologize. This this other part I don't know why they just didn't include it because it's not a long a long paragraph. But it says those who trust in Christ are spared. This is in the teacher's book from God's judgment. But God will evaluate the service for <clears throat> excuse me for him. It says salvation comes by grace through faith, not by works. So the salvation that that person has is only through the grace of God. Okay, so that saves that person from the fire, <clears throat> from hell. But their works, as we know, we don't work for salvation. We work because of salvation, you know. Um, so that that kind of, you know, explains it a little bit. So so would, would that person be considered as a careless believer? A careless believer? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Maybe I was at the game last night too, Nate. Um, <laughs> um, I wouldn't say I would say I would say yeah in a sense because the, 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 if we look at that paragraph, that last paragraph you read, it talked about an immature, stagnant believer, right? So immature, it's going to be careless. The, 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 the outline we read before that it talked about those believers who use cheat. They were they, they cheap and lazy in a mm -hmm. sense. You know, we got to understand if we're growing in Christ, we're going to mature and understand what God wants from us. And we're going to grow into that. But as we see those, these examples here of perishable uh, 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 people that are uh, using perishable materials, they didn't carefully think it through. They just, they, they, they save and they just want, you know, they, they, they get, they, they have faith, but they're not really exercising their faith by building, by, by actually the things that they're doing for the Lord in their everyday life. They just lack of days of going through it. So what do, you, what do you say about a person that was, was raised in church, know the foundation of God straight away, but you know, they chose not to go to church, but they do good things for people. They could do good deeds for people. They, you know, don't mind serving, but they chose not to go to church. Where do those people stand? It's hard to say in a sense, when I look at it, you know, we got people like that, you know, um, but we know good deeds are not going to get us into heaven, exactly. right? Right. So, you know, they can do good things, but the Bible also says that we are supposed to uh, fit for uh, not to uh, forsake of assembling ourselves. So we should be among the other body of believers, <clears throat> you know, and I'm not going to say the person's not saved because they, they kind of straight away and don't go to church, but there ought to be some conviction in that person's life uh, to bring them back to the house of God, to fellowship, because, you know, just doing good works is not going to make up for you not fellowshipping among the saints. Um, but again, when it comes to rewards, how are they, how are their rewards measured? Yeah. Right. Or how are their rewards measured? Are they building upon uh the foundation uh with with stone and, and uh precious precious uh material uh are they building upon it with with straw good deeds you know again some people you know they can do good deeds but their motives behind their good deeds mm -hmm. That's, that's what we got to understand because we can, you know, I can, I can do good deeds, but have the wrong motive behind it. Right. And you can do those same good deeds and your motive could be, could be truly, you know, sincere, but my works, you know, when it's tried are going to be consumed and yours are not. Mm -hmm. So we got to, you know, we don't know what that, that person's motive behind their works, but again, when it comes to assembling themselves, that's something that, you know, should be a, a convicting part of their life to make them want to 
get back into the house of God because again, doing all those good deeds, some people think going to church and doing good deeds in the church is more important than this, than having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Some people think that, well, I, I do this for the church, I do that for the church, but we know what the Bible says. You know, you know, depart from me, I never knew you. You know, so um, I wish I had a definite answer for that, but I just can't, I just can't say for sure, you know, I can't say that person's work would be consumed or or rewarded, uh, but again, it, it's not good to, for, uh, for sake of the assembling of themselves uh, in the church. So, uh, but that's 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 a that's a good question. So that's something God has to judge, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Only God knows their motives. Absolutely. Can I uh, read something really quick? I, it's in my study Bible. Um, yeah. It says it's coming from uh, Corinthians three fifteen. What our lesson and um. It says, he shall suffer laws. The Bible asserts that all the redeemed are free from God's judgment of condemnation. Condemnation. Mm -hmm. John 5.24, uh, Romans 8.1, Hebrews 10.14-17. However, there is a future judgment for believers as to the degree of their faithfulness to God and, their, and the grace given to them during this life on earth. Mm -hmm. uh, in that judgment, there is a possibility that a believer, although receiving salvation, may experience great loss to suffer loss or damage. The careless believer is in, da in danger of suffering loss or damage in the following ways. A feeling of shame at Christ's coming, loss of his or her life's work for God, loss of glory and honor before God loss of opportunity for service and authority in heaven, a low position in heaven, loss of rewards, repayment for the wrong done to others. The, these passages should impress upon us the necessity of complete dedication, including faithful self-sacrifice and service to our Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and that's, that's all they say right there. Those are those are good examples. You know, you, you think about it, you know, if, if Christ were to come back today, how, how mm -hmm. would you feel like you've done all that you possibly can to bring glory and honor to him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people, you know, they think tomorrow is promised to them and that they can put it off and do it till next day. And, you know, and it never gets done. You know, that's why procrastination is not good, you know, but uh, but again, mm -hmm. you, you know, when it gets to the point where rewards of, you know, people are being rewarded for their works. And you see all of these people getting all these great rewards. And then when you, you know, your turn come, you don't get anything, you know? So imagine how that would feel, you know, and you, you probably will feel embarrassed. Uh, but again, you know, think about, you, you know, not to change subject, you know, I, I know that, uh, you know, with coaching basketball, you know, for the little leagues, you know, and some people say it's uh, it's not fair. You ought to give every kid a, a, a trophy, you know, you know, and every kid should get a trophy for being on the team. But when it comes to a special rewards, you got special people that did special things that ought to get, you know, special rewards. And it's kind of like the same thing here. Everybody that earns salvation, you know, receive salvation, not earn salvation, but accept the Christ, you know, uh, are, are going to make it to heaven. But certain things that they do for the Lord, everybody shouldn't get the same rewards. Because if, if I didn't do anything, then why should I be rewarded? It gives an example of uh, Jesus Christ. It was a parable that he did. And he offered these, uh, these men to work and to labor in the vineyard. And they, they accepted, they accepted the, the cost, right? Whatever their pay was. And then right before the, la the last hour, some more men came. And, you know, and they, they still needed, he still, the, the uh, vineyard owner still needed some help. And he told them, you know, hey, for this last hour, I will pay you, you know, such and such amount. And it was the same amount as the other workers, right? And the other workers got mad because they said, hey, we've been working for you all day. You know, he said, well, the bottom line is you, you agreed upon that price. And, and basically he was giving an example of people making it to heaven. So, you know, you got people on their deathbed, people might've been saved for maybe two or three, giving their life to the Lord two or three hours and you served the Lord for 20 years. 
That doesn't mean that that your salvation is better than their salvation. We all get to heaven. But when it comes to the works, they didn't get the opportunity to do the works. So they're not going to get certain rewards where you will get the certain rewards because the work, the works that you've done while you were saved. So it's the same kind of the same thing in a sense, you know. Uh, but again, think about it. Think about how you will feel when that time comes and your work is tried by fire. Will you suffer loss, great loss, where everything that you've done that you put your effort into, you you know, will be consumed, or will your will your will your work stand to testify? You know, uh, some people say or they don't care whether they get rewards or not. Some of them say, well, I just want to make it in. But yeah. that's not the right attitude to have. Yeah. You know, but the, want to yeah. make it in, you know, we should want to uh, do something to do to get a reward. Well, and this this is the thing, you know, when people say that, you know, I, I just can't say, well, I just want to make it in and sit back and wait for Christ to come because God laid upon all of us the Great Commission. So that means that we all we all should be getting rewards. Amen. Yeah. Because we got a Great Commission. And, and yeah. if we, we're following the Great Commission and we're, we're spreading the gospel message and people are being saved for the cause of Christ, then we're all going to get rewards. If we just sit back and say, well, I just want to make it in then what kind of lifestyle are you living? Right. Are you living because you, you accepted you, you said accepted Christ. If we accept Christ, our lifestyle ought to show forth the works. Mm -hmm. Show forth the fruit. So, um, you know, that's a dangerous place to be in. I've heard people say the same thing. You know, um, you know, that's that's a dangerous place to be in, the, the, to that mindset. That's a... Um, that's all I can say about that. That's a dangerous place. I haven't heard of, uh, the song DJ Caddy uh, made. DJ Caddy, I just want to make it into heaven. Yeah, we all we all just want to make it into heaven, but we we don't we don't want to just make it just say hey, I just want to make it into heaven and let's do do because because yeah. basically we don't do anything to make it into heaven except except Christ. The work is he all he did the work, right? So right. right. So he did the work. So the bottom line is us accepting Christ, we make it into heaven. But the bottom line is God has required of us that we're supposed to bring glory and honor to him. He's given, given us the great commission. And that is to carry the gospel message to all those that are lost. So if I just want to make it into heaven, then how obedient am I if I just don't, if I don't share the gospel message? And that's true because based on the Sunday school lesson, the foundation is already laid and we've got to build on it. So, but how we're building on it is gonna is what's gonna matter, you know. Right. Bible says that we're laborers together, you know. So laborers work. Yeah. Right. Um, and and even Jesus even said, and when he said the, the harvest is plenty, but the who who was few laborers? Laborers a few. So we 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 have to work. We don't work for salvation. We work because of salvation. And, and why wouldn't we want others to know about Christ? It's just like you know, this de deadly plague that, uh, you know, pandemic that we were in, is, you know, still in it somewhat. But, um, you know, if, if somebody had the cure for uh, the cure for cancer, uh, the cure for COVID-19 or cure for diabetes, you know, and all you had to do, you know, was, you know, if we if we had the cure, wouldn't we tell somebody? Why wouldn't yeah. we want somebody? knowing that people are dying, you know, and, and, you know, from this, and it's the same thing. People are dying from sin and going to hell mm -hmm. without, without hopes of heaven. But so we should be telling people, Hey, there's a cure to sin. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus Christ. All right. Any other, we might be out of time. That was a good, that, that one part right here. We are, we only got one minute left. Uh, well, we thank God, but this is a really good lesson, but it's important to understand, you know, and the part of talked about the temple of God and, you know, our body, you know, back in the, uh, in the, the, the Bible days, you know, the God dwelt in the temple. Uh, but now in the New Testament, our body is the temple and the spirit of God dwelleth, dwelleth in us. And we got to be careful how we treat our temple. Yeah. You know, are, are we, uh, you know, do we have a healthy temple? Um, you know, what, do, what does our temple look like? 
on the inside. You know, the outside is just a, just you know structure, right? That's all. That's a structure on the inside where the, where the, where, where, where the Bible says where, where the spirit of God dwells in us. How are we, are we, are we contaminating it with certain things that causes our temple to, uh, as the Bible says, quench the spirit. And the Bible tells us not to quench the spirit of God. Why well, says that man may look on the, God, man looks on the flesh, but God looks in the heart. Amen. That's right. <laughs> All right, I'm, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to get into the other parts of the lesson, but that was good. So we got to understand and just pray that God will put upon our hearts to, to labor, uh, labor and love, you know, and, and, and utilizing those fruit of the spirit um, and build upon the foundation that's already laid, you know, with good with good works, you know, not to bring glory in, unlike I believe Elder Bostic great one part was talking about, not a competition. You know, um, you know, with anybody else, all oh, that person did that. And so I'm going to do more. You know, it's good to have friendly competition with certain things. But when it comes to doing the work for the Lord, it's no competition. We all want we all want to uh, do the best we can for the Lord. So it's just making sure that we have the right motives and building upon that foundation and, and the things that we're doing that is bringing glory and honor to God and not to ourselves, because some people like to show off certain things. Look, hey, 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 y'all, look what I did for brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. And it may be great deeds and good deeds, but again, you've just got your reward. The Bible says what you do in secret, God will reward you openly. So, all right. With that said, we're going to uh, thank those that are that watch by Facebook. We pray that God bless you through the teaching on today. Uh, we do apologize. We weren't able to complete the lesson on today. Uh, such good, so much good material and feedback. Um, but again, we thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, if you'd like to be a blessing to the ministry, you can do so by going to our, uh, uh, our Givelify app. Uh, you can search for Partakers Church of Christ Ministries and you can give through Givelify, or if you don't have the app, you can go to our website at www.partakerschurch.org, and you can click on Give Now. It will take you to Givelify, where you can be a blessing to the ministry, and we thank you in advance for your liberal giving, and thanking you also for the times that you may have given before. Uh, we just give God thanks for you, and uh, pray that if you, those are in the Temple Hills area, or Suitland area or PG County. We're not far uh, from you. So if you'd like to join us for worship this morning, you can do so at 11 o'clock at 4516 Beach Road in Temple Hills, Maryland. Uh, we have plenty of room for you. So if you missed the in-person worship and you want to get back into the church, you can do so today. Come and join us out for morning. Come and join us this morning for um, worship at 4516 Beach Road in Temple Hills, Maryland. We'd love to join you. Uh, all right, Deacon Edwards, if you want to dismiss us at this time. All, right. all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Amen. 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 All right, you are at 11 o'clock. Okay. <laughs>